Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Monday, it is September 26th. So, welcome to Monday. Um, I've got my cup of tea this morning. I've got something kind of unusual. It's, um, it's chamomile with linden flowers and it's really lovely smooth taste and I'm enjoying it. So I hope you've got a cup of tea or coffee there ready for you. Um, bring you up to speed on the um, events in the world over the weekend and uh, get you started on a, a brand new week. So thanks again for being here. I'm really grateful that you take the time every morning to join me and uh, it's my pleasure to, to do this for you. So don't ever hesitate, by the way, to leave comments about what you would like us to cover, uh, stories perhaps that you'd like me to explore. And uh, you know this is your, your place, your time. So leave comments as we go. And um, I love reading the conversations. So thank you again for being here. Now, in the United States, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump um, are virtually tied as they go into their first television uh, debate this evening. And uh, it's going to be quite an interesting show. 74% of the American public, according to a survey, say that uh, they'll be watching. And that's more than you get for a Super Bowl. So it's a pretty um, interesting evening ahead. Um, now, we have actually kept a very neutral um, perspective on the elections the last few months. We've reported the highlights but uh, take a no side and we'd like to keep it that way. We have, however, uh, written a story today on 60 and Me on the website uh, asking you to comment on what you think are the topics you would like to be discussed this evening uh, in the presidential debate that impact um, our, our age and our demographic. Um, are you interested in them talking about Social Security, Medicaid, are you perhaps interested in uh, age discrimination, caregiving? What's, uh, what topics are on your mind? I think it would be really interesting to share that information. So please, um, please feel free. Now, over the weekend um, in Poland, there was a big demonstration. Thousands of people showed up to protest the, uh, the government in power, and they are primarily concerned about some of the um, law and order um, clampdowns in Poland, and especially the ban um, on abortion that is being proposed. It's, um, it's al already fairly difficult in Poland, but the, the government is looking for even stronger controls. So that's in Poland this weekend. Um, back in the United States, um, very sad to, uh, to announce that Arnold Palmer, the, the king of golf, has died, age 87. He had left a real impact on the game of golf, um, you know, kind of moved it from being a country club, um, you know, elitist event to something for the masses. So he contributed a lot to his sport, and I'm sure you'll be hearing more about his life and his legacy today. Now, in Mexico, um, there were also uh, demonstrations the weekend there, and uh, the Mexican people are also protesting an other government, anti-government uh, protests, uh, really around, uh, again, um, legislation of uh, same-sex marriage. Now, the president uh, did announce that this was going to be something he would promote, but uh, there are people who are not in agreement with that perspective, so there was a big demonstration um, on the weekend in Mexico City. So another another hot topic. <laughs> now in uh, in Spain, just to cover the rest of the news in Europe, there's um, there's been a real challenge with the Spanish government for the last several years. There have been two elections just in the, the past year and the government, the people's government seems um, to, to always get a, a slight majority but not enough to form a government. So there are four different parties in, in Spain that are fighting for dominance and they've been bickering backwards and forwards and just can't get a government formed. So on the weekend there were elections in two areas. Um, there was the Basque area and Galatia area. These are quite important parts of the country and it looks like the results of those elections could impact the the deadlock that um has been uh, you know that's been in place in spain for for so many months so let's hope so it's spain's a great country and uh, the, the people are wonderful and i really hope that they can get themselves a government in place to help move them forward with their um with their challenges so that's happening in the news of the world now I've got a story here today that I think is kind of fun. <laughs> we talk about this a lot in 60 and Me, both on the website and also in Facebook and other places, about where you want to live when you retire. 
Now, we've done surveys and it found that a lot of women really just want to stay alone. They don't particularly want to um, live with family or or live, um, you know, in a in a commune. But they but they, and they like living by themselves. But a lot feel isolated and a little lonely. And it's a I think a nice idea to um, uh, have options. So. Uh, I got an article to share with you from um, a group called uh, Senior Planet. It's a wonderful website. I, I um, encourage you to check it out. But they talk about um, this idea of living in a kind of co-housing arrangement where you're living with other women um, in your own small apartment but have the um, benefit of a group uh, dynamic. And they talk about this woman called Therese Clerc. Clerk, and she was in her mid-60s, lived in France, where she decided she wanted to form um, a cooperative for women to live together. And she lived in, in Paris and uh, joined a group of her friends to, to start this community. And it took them 13 years to get this organized. And so today she's in her 70s and they've set up a, a kind of a self-governing, environmentally friendly um, uh, home or ha um, a, um, apartment building for women over 60. And it's called Baba Yaga. It's called the Baba Yaga House. And this article in, in um, Senior Planet talks about it in more detail. But basically, they, they built a building um, for women. Uh, I think the, actually the age group for them was over 50, but uh, they built this apartment building and allowed women to move in. It's not for wealthy people. It's a lot of the people are under a poverty line. There's a, a mix of people. And they um, have these small apartments. Everyone has a small room. And then there's a central area where they get together for dinners and, and social events. And it's really, really popular. And in France, um, oh, by, by the way, I forgot to mention, Baba Yaga is um, a supernatural being in uh, Slavic um, uh, folklore, and she's an, a, a witch who offers mentoring and guidance to younger women. I think Baba Yaga is a great name for uh, for a cooperative uh, co-housing uh, situation. But anyway, they built this house. They've got these small one-bedroom apartments, and it's doing really well. Now, it's uh, catching on around the world. And in Canada, uh, there's a group that has started to do... Um, this uh, same model, and the and Therese Clerc and her her uh, colleagues are helping them to get theirs started as well. And when they uh, promoted this in Toronto, have over 150 people signed up for it, and uh, they're now trying to get some uh, some activity going, building uh, an apartment building like the one in Paris, and they're actually looking for government support. Personally, I think it's a brilliant idea. I just think there's a lot of women who don't want to live by themselves, but they want their private space and they want it with women that share their values and their ideas. So that's a really cool idea. Now, if you're interested in this, go to, um, there's a, a website we'll put in the article uh, where you can go and check it out. Now, it's in French, but if you use Chrome, you can actually right click and go translate to English and then you can read it. Um, it's just fascinating. I wish more of these would start in other parts of the world. And if you want to start your own, um, wherever you are in the world, uh, you can actually get some guidance and um, inspiration from the Baba Yaga team in Paris. So that's, a, I think, a great story. And I'd love your feedback on that one. Now, you know, getting older is fun, isn't it? <laughs> and it's so complicated. And uh, we listen to our little heads go on these conversations all day. I certainly do. And I found a quote by uh, Jeff Bridges, actor, who kind of summarized in my mind what we all go through every day in our, our little mental conversations. I call it monkey mind, <laughs> where you go in circles. Um, and I just thought this was a great quote and I wanted to just leave, leave you with it. Anyway, he says, I'll read it here. He says, I'm 66. I can't believe it, man. I can't believe it. They tell you this is your whole life and it's true how fast it goes. He says, it picks up speed and I've got two voices in my head. You know, one is saying, man, you're 66, you know, you're not gonna live forever. And you've got a lot of stuff you wanna do, so get on with it because it's gonna be over in a little while. How much time left? That's one voice. Is And the other guy says, will you please relax? You don't wanna spend the rest of your life doing this achieving homework thing, so just take it easy. 
<laughs> and I just, when I read that, I thought, no, that's totally what I think about all the time. You know, like, yeah, time is short, but oh, I just have to take some time, break it, you know, make it easy on myself and, and relax a bit. Anyway, I don't know if that resonates with you, but I just wanted to share it with you as a, maybe a, uh, something that, you know, give you something to think about this week as you go into your busy and relaxed week. Now, I wanted to get you caught up on, on the situation with our scarf yesterday. We had so many women talking about this beautiful butterfly scarf, <laughs> and I do love it, and so did you. And we had so many people um, asking that, you know, to have it, and I really wanted to send it to everybody. But I did choose one person, and uh, I'll get this in the mail to you. Her name is Barbara Lawson, Larton, Larson, <laughs> Barbara Larson. Hi, Barbara. If you're listening, I'm sorry I messed up your name, but um, you know, I, thank you for sending your note and uh, I'm going to send this beautiful butterfly scarf to you. So Barbara Larson, the winner of our, our scarf. And today's gift, I've actually got a couple. I, actually, I'm going to give two of these away today. Um, I, I love giving away little presents because we don't treat each ourselves enough, right? So this one is a face mask. Now, it comes from Korea. I'm going to hold it up without turning the screen too yellow. Um, it comes from Korea and it's called, um, uh, it's a Innisfree and it's a brand of, of, of cosmetics products in, in Korea. Now, they are really, really um, uh, on into uh, skin care. They take really good care of their skin and they love these kinds of uh, natural products to make them, you know, shine and, and, and glow. And this pomegranate one is interesting. I did some research. Um, basically, pomegranate uh, a serum, which is on this mask, gives you all kinds of um, tightening and um, you know, sort of soothing effects. It's got lots of vitamin C in it, which helps to um, generate the um, production of collagen. That's why that vitamin C um, oil is really good for your face. And also, it's got essential fatty acids, compounds in pomegranate that um, help you to um, uh, regenerate your cells. So this is a really cool mask, and I'd like to give it to two people. So if you would love to try this, it's one of these um, sheet masks. So I know, you know, you take it out of the package, and it's like you you put it, they put the mask on your face, like it's made out of this sort of little cloth. I don't know if I'm describing this very well, but it's not like a cream. It's like a mask that you put on, and you leave it on for 20 minutes, and then take it off. And it's supposed to do magical things for your face. At least make you feel good. And um, anyway, the other thing to remind you is even though it's from Korea, the instructions are in English. So you'll be able to figure out what to do. So if you would like to try this pomegranate mask, just leave a comment in the section below. It can be about any of the topics we've talked about. It can just be about you, something that's on your mind. And I'll choose again randomly two names and get these beautiful Korean face masks off to you. Hope you like them. Now, um, that's that's my, my gift for the day. I hope you uh, enjoy it. Um, I also wanted to mention one thing, which was yesterday we gave um, some DVDs, our yoga DVDs, to five different people. And we actually gave six away because um, people can leave comments on, on YouTube or on our website. And there was someone on YouTube who commented, and her name was Teresa Kiao. Uh, Teresa, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is it Kyo Kiao? Anyway, Teresa, I'm glad you're here. And I did actually give you one as well. So it's on its way. I think you send your um, address to us and we'll get it in the mail. But I wanted to mention Teresa's name as well. And to thank you all. You know, thank you all for just being here, jumping in <laughs> to the conversations and just, uh, you know, enjoying this time that we have together on Mornings with 60 and Me. So please, if you've got friends who'd like to join this, um, this uh, um, I don't know, sort of get together every day, please go to 60andme.com forward slash mornings and uh, we'll uh, you know, welcome them here. I'd love to have more people joining us every day. So um, I have a question for today for you to think about. And it kind of goes back to the Baba Yaga article. And that is very simply, you know, what when it comes to um, living arrangements, what kind of living arrangement would you ideally like in your retirement? Does the Baba Yaga model uh, appeal to you? I'd be very interested in, in getting your com and your comments on that and your and your feedback. So, what kind of a living arrangement would you ideally like in retirement? And do you like the Baba Yaga model? Look forward to reading your comments and joining the conversation. Thanks again for being here. I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. 
Have a fantastic day, everyone. Take good care. Bye-bye for now.